Trinity B1 ISC1 4 Skills Test CELT Secure English Language Tests B1 English Test ISC1 Skilled Worker Health and Care Worker Scale-Up Worker Student Visas uh, Okay, beautiful. I'm going to play a recording uh, about advice for exams. Okay? You okay. will listen to the recording and then i'll ask you six questions about the recording i'll play it twice okay morning everyone <laughs> quiet please right okay so today i'm going to give you some advice to help you prepare for the exams next week so make some notes as i'm talking please Everybody ready? Now, while you're studying, eat food that gives you energy. Don't be tempted to eat sweets or drink cola. Now, sugar won't help you study, but fruit and cereals will. Apples, actually, are especially good. Find a comfortable place with plenty of light when you study but not too comfortable or you'll fall asleep. <laughs> Try and keep a positive mind. It is easier to study when you are positive and relaxed. Now, if you start feeling anxious, have a little break. Go out for a stroll around the block. Don't try to learn everything. There isn't time. Just choose the important things, the things that will get you the most points in an exam. Now, if you aren't sure about this, ask me. First, learn the main ideas and don't worry too much about the details. If you have time, you can come back later and read the details. Make notes of these key points and read them. Then cover them up and try to remember all the points. Now it might be boring but repetition helps you to remember. Use past exam papers to study. They will help you understand what kind of questions come up. There are plenty of past exam papers in the library. You can photocopy them and take them home. Take regular breaks while you're studying. A five minute break every half hour is usually enough. Get some fresh air and stretch your arms and legs. Drink a glass of water too. It's important to keep hydrated. And last but not least, good luck. <laughs> Morning, everyone. <laughs> Quiet, please. Right, OK. So today I'm going to give you some advice to help you prepare for the exams next week. So make some notes as I'm talking, please. <laughs> Everybody ready? Now, while you're studying, eat food that gives you energy. Don't be tempted to eat sweets or drink cola. Now, sugar won't help you study, but fruit and cereals will. Apples, actually, are especially good. Find a comfortable place with plenty of light when you study, but not too comfortable or you'll fall asleep. <laughs> Try and keep a positive mind. It is easier to study when you are positive and relaxed. Now, if you start feeling anxious, have a little break. Go out for a stroll around the block. Don't try to learn everything. There isn't time. Just choose the important things, the things that will get you the most points in an exam. 
And if you aren't sure about this, ask me. First, learn the main ideas and don't worry too much about the details. If you have time, you can come back later and read the details. Make notes of these key points and read them. Then cover them up and try to remember all the points. Now, it might be boring, but repetition helps you to remember. Use past exam papers to study. They will help you understand what kind of questions come up. There are plenty of past exam papers in the library. You can photocopy them and take them home. Take regular breaks while you're studying. A five minute break every half hour is usually enough. Get some fresh air and stretch your arms and legs. Drink a glass of water too. It's important to keep hydrated. And last but not least, good luck. <laughs> All right, could you tell me when is the exam? I'm sorry, say Sorry. it again. When is the exam? Uh, the exam uh, it, it will be in the next week. That is correct. What kind of food you should avoid? We should avoid the fruits like uh, colas and sweets and drinks. Okay. What will happen if the place is too comfortable? If the place is too comfortable, we will uh, fall asleep. What to do if you feel stressed? If you feel stressed, uh, you have to uh, take a break, go out and stroll around the block. How to select what to study? Uh, it's important to... Uh, uh, learn the main ideas from and the key points and have to make the notes of the key points what helps you to remember what you've learned the repetition help us to uh, remember thank you and where are the past papers available in the library Thank you. You have passed this part with a distinction. Now we're going to move to part two. I'm going to play a recording about organizing your time. I want you to listen to it and then tell me in few words what is this recording about. You are not allowed okay. to take any notes. Okay. On Star Students today, we are speaking to Peter, who is going to tell us about the Pomodoro Technique, a system to help manage your time. It was invented by an Italian man called Francesco Cirillo in the 1980s. Now, he called it the Pomodoro Technique after a tomato-shaped timer that his mother used to use when she was cooking. Pomodoro is Italian for tomato, and this tomato has helped Peter become an A-grade student. So, Peter, welcome to the studio. Thanks. Tell us about the Pomodoro Technique. What's it about? It's about getting maximum productivity from your available time. I use it for studying, but professionals use it at work. Is it difficult to follow? No, it's actually very simple. It's about breaking down your work into separate jobs and then using a timer to separate your time into periods of intensive work and short breaks. OK, well, that sounds sensible. So how do you start? First of all, you should think about the task you need to complete. For example, writing an essay for homework. You need to think about all the stages of the task and write a clear to-do list on a piece of paper. 
When you are ready to start, you set the timer to 25 minutes and you start working on the first item on the list. OK, but what happens when the timer goes off? When the timer goes off, you must take a short break of between 3 to 5 minutes. One 25-minute session is one Pomodoro. So, when you have completed this, you deserve a short break. You should try to move about a bit during the break. Then, set the timer for another 25 minutes and keep working. At the end of the next Pomodoro, you have another short break. As you complete the items on the to-do list, you should tick them off to give you a feeling of satisfaction that you're getting the job done. OK, I get it. Can you use any timer? Most people have timers on their phones these days. Could you use that? You could, but the danger is that then you can check messages on your phone or you start looking at apps. I use my dad's kitchen timer and I make sure I switch off my phone when I'm studying. I get so much more done. In the breaks, I sometimes check my phone, but only if I've completed some of the items on my to-do list. Well, three to five minutes isn't long for a break. Is that enough time? Well, when you've had four or five short breaks, you can take a longer break, and then you start again. And it works? <laughs> yes, it works for me. It stops me wasting time. My work is much more effective when I use the timer. It's like short, intense periods of work. I actually get my homework done a lot quicker now, which leaves me more free time. So, for me, it works really well. Well, I think I'll give it a try. Thanks so much for coming in, Peter. You're welcome. Thanks for inviting me. Right, could you please tell me what is this recording about in few words? Uh this recording is about a device uh, a boy, Peter, uh, uh, use first time. Okay. Now listen again and write down six important facts from the recording. Okay. After the recording will end, I would want you to tell me those six things about it. Let's listen. Okay. On Star Students today, we are speaking to Peter, who is going to tell us about the Pomodoro Technique, a system to help manage your time. It was invented by an Italian man called Francesco Cirillo in the 1980s. Now, he called it the Pomodoro Technique after a tomato-shaped timer that his mother used to use when she was cooking. Pomodoro is Italian for tomato, and this tomato has helped Peter become an A-grade student. So, Peter, welcome to the studio. Thanks. Tell us about the Pomodoro Technique. What's it about? It's about getting maximum productivity from your available time. I use it for studying, but professionals use it at work. Is it difficult to follow? No, it's actually very simple. It's about breaking down your work into separate jobs and then using a timer to separate your time into periods of intensive work and short breaks. OK, well, that sounds sensible. So how do you start? First of all, you should think about the task you need to complete. For example, writing an essay for homework. You need to think about all the stages of the task and write a clear to-do list on a piece of paper. When you are ready to start, you set the timer to 25 minutes and you start working on the first item on the list. OK, but what happens when the timer goes off? When the timer goes off, you must take a short break of between 3 to 5 minutes. One 25-minute session is one Pomodoro. So, when you have completed this, you deserve a short break. You should try to move about a bit during the break. Then, set the timer for another 25 minutes and keep working. At the end of the next Pomodoro, you have another short break. As you complete the items on the to-do list, you should tick them off 
to give you a feeling of satisfaction that you're getting the job done. OK, I get it. Can you use any timer? Most people have timers on their phones these days. Could you use that? You could, but the danger is that then you can check messages on your phone or you start looking at apps. I use my dad's kitchen timer and I make sure I switch off my phone when I'm studying. I get so much more done. In the breaks, I sometimes check my phone, but only if I've completed some of the items on my to-do list. Well, three to five minutes isn't long for a break. Is that enough time? Well, when you've had four or five short breaks, you can take a longer break, and then you start again. And it works? <laughs> yes, it works for me. It stops me wasting time. My work is much more effective when I use the timer. It's like short, intense periods of work. I actually get my homework done a lot quicker now, which leaves me more free time. So, for me, it works really well. Oh, I think I'll give it a try. Thanks so much for coming in, Peter. You're welcome. Thanks for inviting me. Yes, could you please tell me six facts from the recording? Uh, this uh, recording is about a device called Pomodoro, a system used to manage time that was invented by uh, Italian, uh, uh, Italian Francesco in 1889. And uh, this, uh, the term used, Pomodoro, is uh, uh, derived from an Italian word that is for tomato. And... Uh, this is mainly used uh, for breakdown of uh, to break down the works into separate periods so you can work easily and one complete uh, after one complete uh, uh, cycle that is called one pomodoro you have to uh, rest for 2 to 3 minutes and uh, mm, that's it it also stops uh, wasting time. Basically, we have timer on our phone that we can use, but Pomodoro is best to use because if we use the mobile, uh, then we can check our messages and apps and other things. So the Pomodoro is the best to waste the time. Thank you. Thank you so much. And you have passed your... Speaking and listening test, congratulations to